Hey everybody, uh, this is the second part of 10-5. Uh, this is probability um, and conditional probability of dependent uh, events. Okay, so probability of dependent events and conditional probability. Okay, and the last one we did independent events. These ones are going to be de dependent. So two events, uh, A and B, are dependent if the occurrence of one affects the occurrence of the other. And I know what you're thinking. What? This will make sense after that we start getting to some examples here. So the probability of B will occur uh, uh, given that, whoops, I forgot a T right there, given that um, the occurrence is called uh, con the conditional probability, okay? So so um, uh, when they do conditional probability, let me fix that right there, there we go, uh, uh, they write it like this, you guys. This says the probability of B given that A has happened, okay? So this means um, uh, dependent stuff, you guys. Dependent events and conditional probabilities are the same thing. So so here we go. You randomly select two cards from a standard deck and replace the first card before selecting the second card. Find each probability. Okay, now if we replace the first card, does the second card, um, is there any, does it depend on what we pulled on the first card if the first card gets replaced? And so a uh, Hopefully you guys know that that's a no statement because if you replace it, there's going to still be 52 cards in there. So this is independent. Okay, so they're both hearts. And then the first one is a jack, the second one is a club, and then the third one is uh, the first one equals a 10 and the second one equals a diamond. Okay, so these are independent. So we just take each probability and multiply. Okay, they're both hearts. Okay, so there's 13 hearts out of 52 cards. Now remember, we put it back in, so there's still 13 cards out of 52 cards, and so we can reduce those both to one-fourth right there, and we get one 16th right there. Okay, how many jacks in a deck? Well, there's four jacks out of 52 cards, and we put that jack back in, and so the second one is a club. There's 13 clubs out of 52 cards, okay? Go ahead and reduce. That reduces to 1 13th, and 13s can reduce, so 1 out of 52 times, 1 over 52. All right, so how many tens of hearts in the deck? There's one of them, and the second one is a diamond. Remember, we put it back in the deck, so there's going to be 13 diamonds back in the club. Uh, uh, in the deck right there, okay? So there we go, and then go ahead and reduce that 13 over 52, and so we get 1 over 208, as long as I multiplied right. Okay, now this one's dependent, because now we're going to uh, do two cards again, but we're not replacing the first. So note, this is the same thing as selecting two cards at the same time, okay? So if it says you're pulling two cards at the same time, then it depends on which one got pulled first, because you're going to leave it out. You're not replacing it. Okay, so this one is, they're both hearts. Okay, 13 cards out of 52, and then you leave your heart out. Okay, does that make sense? You leave it out. Okay, so there's going to be 12 hearts left out of 51 cards left. Okay, so book the book here is going to say this formula right here. The probability of A times the probability of B given that A happened right here. Okay, all right, so since B is dependent on what A is, because you uh, are not replacing, you're leaving it out. So that's what this is right here. All right, now if that confuses you, this is how I do it, you guys. Here's the probability of the first one, 13 out of 52. There's 13 hearts. Now we leave the heart out, and so there's only 12 hearts left and only 51 cards left. And then reduce that when you can. You can reduce that to 1 fourth, and then the fours can cancel, so you get 1 17. Okay, let's do number two over here, okay? The first one is a jack, so you leave the jack out. So the second one, there's still four tens in there, but there's only 51 cards left, okay? Because you make the assumption you pulled the jack out, okay? Go ahead and reduce, and then you get um, uh, one less jack, but still four tens in there, so uh, you get four over 663, okay? All right, this one says the first one is a ten of hearts. How many ten of hearts? Well, there's one ten of hearts, so then you leave it out. So there's still 51 cards in there and still 13 diamonds in there, okay? So that one's going to get us that, and then go ahead and reduce, and we, that's what you get right there if we multiply it right, okay? So that's what uh, dependent... Um, uh, or conditional probability means, okay? All right, so here's an example on page 720, example 6. You and two friends go to the same store at different times to buy costumes for a costume party. Okay, there are 15 different costumes at the store, and the store has at least three duplicates in each costume. What is the probability that you 
each choose a different costume. So three people are going to a store and you're choosing a different costume. So I'm going to let A be the event of your costume, B be the event that your your friend chooses a different one, and C be the, the event that your third friend chooses a whole completely different one. Okay, so we're going to do the probability of A and B and C, okay? So this one, this part right here is going to be the probability that uh, they choose, um, this one right here just means a different um, uh, costume right here. Okay, this one's going to be the probability of a different costume from A and B. So this says the probability that your, uh, your third friend chooses a costume given that these two are different right here. Okay, hope that makes sense right there, you guys. Okay, so here we go. You got 15 out of 15 different choices to choose from a costume right here. All right, now there's still 15 different costumes in here because of this little um, a blooper right here. It says there the store has at least three duplicates. So whatever costume you choose, there's still going to be that same costume that the next one's going to choose. But they have 14 because you choose one. You chose one. Sorry. <laughs> 14 out of 15 and this one's going to be one less than that it's going to be 13 but there's still 15 different costumes to choose from right there okay so they decrease on the numerators but they stay the same on the denominators because uh, there's still 15 different costumes in there okay so then let's go ahead and reduce those cancel right there and so we have 14 times 13 over 15 times 15 and there we get that probability right there okay makes sense all right so this is another example on the same page so you uh, using observations made of drivers arriving at a, a certain high school, a study reports that 69% of adults wear seat belts uh, while driving. Uh, a high school student also in the car wears a seat belt 66% of the time when the adult wears the seat belt, and 26% of the time, oops, I forgot a knee right there, uh, when the adult does not wear the seat belt. Okay, I'm missing an E. I'm not going to worry about that. What is the probability that a high school student in the study wears the seat belt? Okay, so we got to consider if there's two ch uh, different ways, you guys, whether the adult is wearing the seat belt. Then uh, it changes the percentage when, um, so if, um, uh, when the adult wears the seat belt is 69%. That means 31% of the time the adult's not wearing the seat belt. So 31% of the time, then that means 26% of the time the kids are not wearing the seat belt. Okay. So here's what's called a probability tree, where the probabilities are given along the branches right here. So this just says seat belt right here. So here's the adult. So uh, the adult wears the seat belt 69% of the time and doesn't wear the seat belt the other part, the complement, so 31% of the time. This has to add up to 100% right here. Okay, now, of when the adult wears the seat belt, the, the students wear the seat belt 66% of the time. That means they don't wear the seat belt the rest of that, 100% of the time, okay? And then over here, when the adult doesn't wear the seat belt, then the, it goes down. 26% uh, of the kids wear the seat belt, and 74% don't wear the seat belt. So to find these probabilities over here, I'm going to just take that away right there. To get these probabilities, we just multiply the branches. This one times this one will tell us the probability that a student wears a seat belt, given this this uh, scenario right here. Okay, so if I multiply 69% times 34%. That'll tell me uh, the event uh, that the student doesn't wear a seat belt in that scenario. And then I got this number from multiplying 0.31 times 0.26. That gave us this one right here. And then 0.31 times 0.74 gives us this one right here. These numbers always add up to 1 or really close to 1. And the reason why this isn't um, exactly 1 right there is just called round off error. So somewhere they, you know, it's not exactly 69% or 31%. And it's not exactly, you know, the 34% and the 66%. So uh, these are rounding off. So what happens is it, it, this is called round off error. But this should be really, really close to 1 right here. All right, so the question is asking you guys, um, uh, what are the probabilities when the student wears the seat belt? Okay, so we get the student wearing the seat belt right in this branch right here and this branch right here. So here's 45.54%, and this is uh, 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 
8.06%, and they said probability, so that's a decimal answer right here. So we add those together right here, because this is where they're going to wear the seat belt in these two scenarios right here. So 0.536 is the probability that a student wears a seat belt. All right, and then real quick, let n be a randomly selected integer from 1 to 40. Find the indicated probabilities. Okay, these are conditional probabilities, okay? This says find the probability that n is prime given that it's even. Okay, so the condition is that it's even. So of these numbers, 1 to 40, how many even numbers are there? There's 20 even numbers right there. And the only even number that's, uh, that's out of the even numbers is the number 2. 2 is the only even number. So there's only one number out of the 20 even numbers. So the probability is 1 20th. Okay, so it's a conditional probability. So we're dealing with the numbers 1 to 40. Okay, so here we're dealing with the numbers 1 to 40. What's the probability that the number is 15 given that's a multiple of 3? So how many multiples of 3 are in 40? Well, 3 is 1, 6 is 1, uh, 9, 12, 15, all the way up to 39. There's 13 multiples of 3. And 15 is only one number, so it's 1 out of the 13 times. Okay, so it's find the probability that you pull 15, given that it's a multiple of 3. Okay, that's why it's a, can, can, given that it's the condition, it's a multiple of 3. Okay, find the probability that we pull the number 32, given that it's a number greater than 25. So we've got to find out how many numbers are greater than 25. There's 15 of them, so it's 1 15th. All right, you guys, if you're in my class, that's going to be your assignment. Take care.